Eric, I just came to say how sorry I am. How deeply, deeply sorry. Only those of us who've trod the rocky path of life and stared into the pothole of crisis can understand how you must be feeling. And if there's uh, anything, uh, anything at all I can do to help, just say the word. Yes, yeah, sunny days are here again, my friend. In my good fortune, I have happened upon the Tutankhamun's tomb of garden equipment. Really? Yeah, now, as someone who's been in gardens all his life, you will appreciate what I've got here. This is a machine that actually makes people wolf whistle in the street. I have seen motorbike couriers riding less powerful machines than these. Mr. Daly. Now, for a lawn maintenance unit like this, we would normally be asking seven. But bearing in mind the number involved, I'm happy to let them go for five. Are they hot, Mr. Daly? Certainly not. Hot, my friend? A little bit warm, perhaps, but you'd expect that with fire damage stock. Oh, yes. I heard about that. Terrible. Terrible. Eric had had that garden centre 15 years. And one of the great ironies of life, apparently the fire started in the wiring for his new sprinkler system. Out of property of the Hanging Gardens of Neesden. Well, you sold them already? The art of the entrepreneur, eh? I see an opportunity, dive in, snap it up, and get out quick with the spoils. Isn't that what a shark does? Raymond, do not sully the name of commerce. What, 28 sooty gnomes and a moth eating advert balloon? We lost leaders. If I hadn't bought the job lot, I wouldn't have got the mowers, would I? Anyway, these boys will have their vocation. Fiat opportunists. Everything has its opportunity. What, even that balloon? Oh, yeah. What? Yeah, you uh, bin that when you've tucked all the mowers up. What, tonight? Oh, yes. Very easily emotionally disturbed lawnmowers. They hate being out at night. That is why God invented sheds. Yeah, when did I... those go up? I don't know, but Arthur, I'm supposed to... This is your generation, you know. When I was a boy, we used to stuff potatoes up exhaust pipes for a bit of fun, but your lot, no. Posters and graffiti all over the place. Yeah, but Arthur, it's half past six. Such a positive imagination. Do me a favour. Take it down before you knock off it. Lowers the tone of the place. But that is all right. 28 gnomes. More or less. I've been the rest. <laughs> Not like you to have been anything, Arthur. Not even I can find a use for an airship. An airship? Yeah, blimp, balloon thing. You know, he used to have it flying above the car park with Eric's on it. Yeah, you, you've never been there. Well, what do I want with a 20-foot balloon with Eric's on it? They make some bit of money, that's all. They what? Who does make a bit of money? There's a bloke I know up in the black country. He's got a firm. He rents them out. What for, right? It's an advertising offer. Companies will fork out to see their name up in the sky. Big money, apparently. He charges by the week. And, uh, is he? I mean, does he? Well, all I know is that he bought his missus a brand new red Porsche for her birthday. Because she got bored with a black one. <laughs> Young Ray coming in. Mm. He's doing some property maintenance. Very important, that. The public face of a business should always look clean. That's the right skin. Yes, Arthur. Silly yellow bag. I know, Arthur. I put it in here, Arthur, like you told me. Don't raise your voice in the street. It's very unprofessional. Well, it's only a tatty old blimp. I just suddenly want it back. It has been rescued from destruction by the fair maiden of opportunity. Well, perhaps you'd like to come in here and find it. Yeah, that's right. One photo, four by four, in colour. How much? Look, I want it done in Wilsdon, not Trinidad. Yeah, 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 I'm sure there are standard rates. But I wasn't aware I'd phoned Lord Litchfield instead of Harry Powell at me snapper. All right, all right. What would it cost in black and white? 
Oh, well, I'm sorry if it impinges on your creativity. But it'd be cheaper to dismantle the scene and rebuild it in a photo booth. Ray, how long did it take to press a button? Arthur. Here's me thinking 100%'s a good marker. Arthur, will you stop? What is going on? Business is going on, Ray. Our phoenix is rising out of Eric's ashes. What business? Aha, good boy. Arthur, what business? Daily inflatables. Advertise in the skies. You are joking. Well, if you want to be seen, you've got to be up in the sky and we have a balloon. We have a balloon with Eric's written on it. Oh, that goes. Any punter's name can be on there. I so think... what we want, we want a leaflet with a photo to show them. It, honestly, do you know what these photographers are charging? I thought he was telling me the speed of the film he was going to be using. Well, look, now, what we... we want, what we want is someone who would do us a favour. So, hold on. That girlfriend of yours. Oh, no. She's a photographer. I'm not asking Gloria. Well, look, she's got a camera. She's bound to have some spare film kicking around. Arthur, I'm not asking Gloria. Oh, come on. No. Why not? Because I know what she'd say. No. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Look, Gloria, I know what you're going to say. I just said it. Well, let me explain. Oh, I understand, Ray. You want me to take pictures for Arthur Daly for nothing. Look, it's not... I can't believe this, you know. After all, he pushed you through. Oh. Well, Arthur! I thought I was round. I don't skivvy round. Really? Should it's a proper job, Gloria. OK, OK, come on. What did you do today, then, in your proper job? What, today? Yeah? Well, I had to shift some lawnmowers down to, um... Then I had to take the... Look, I don't have to justify what I do to you. You're skivvying for Arthur. Uh, Gloria, you've said no, OK? Just don't give me this anti-Arthur stuff. OK. Well, I suppose if I tell myself I'm doing it for you and not for Arthur, and if it's the last thing I have to do with him, OK. And the price is a meal out? Done. <laughs> who does he want photographing, anyway? Well, it's not exactly who as such. It's, um... It's an airship. What? What, up there? Hmm. I thought you was photographing it in the locker. Yeah, you'll have to blow it up. Hey, what, with a bike pump? Don't be dark, Ray. We'll be here all night. No, nip it down the garage. Arthur, you just can't hitch it up to the free air pump. No lilos, no footballs. It don't say nothing about no airships. Look, the most you can do with air is check for leaks. You can't float it without helium. No. Yes, they just didn't hit the R101 down the garage, you know. Yeah, and look what happened to the R101. What? Well, if that had been full of air, it wouldn't have exploded, would it? It would have just punctured. Gone 400 miles in three seconds and wrapped yourself around a tree in Denmark. It wouldn't have got off the ground. Look, I can't stand in that ring. I've got a bit of Joey Bullen's half pass. Just get on with the job. Arthur, I do my job and this isn't it. Pardon? I'm supposed to be a minder. Yes, Raymond. And if you look in the Greater Oxford Dictionary under minder, you'll see it's derived from the Latin and it means one who does what he's told without moaning, which is currently what I'm expecting of you. Now, get on the case. Joey, as soon as I saw this balloon, I thought of you. You what? As a consumer of advertising. The ring. Still going strong, I see. Oh, aye. Uh, legendary Joey Bull and Fight Nights. First Friday in every month. Aye. What was it we always used to say, you and me? I don't know. Oh, we always used to say something. We had to say it. Did we? No. Mm. Forgotten it now. Oh, well. Time marches on, Joey. Mm. I see you're still using the posters for advertising. Oh, yeah. Here's tonight's. Ah. Great mine up, Arthur. Bill Flying Dutchman Van Dyke. Oh, Dutch, is he? Fantastic left hook. Very good. Hook of Holland. Eh? Holland, look. Dutch. It's good to see a lifetime of boxing hasn't dulled your native wit, Joey. No. <laughs> but I must say your advertising clout leaves a lot to be desired. Oh? How is that? Well, as it stands, conventional. But I'm here to tell you, come next month, your fight night could have a bit of the old Arthur Daly punch. Not started doing the posters, have you? Oh, well, yeah, we can do posters, obviously. In conjunction. But you know me, Joey. I always have my eye on higher things. Trouble. Hey? Uh, 
No, I'll manage, mate. Balloon, is it? Yeah, kind of. They sometimes have them up with names on, don't they? Yeah, well, that's what this one's for. Arthur Daly Inflatables. Your boss wants it up over his car lot for a photo. <coughs> yeah, all right, all right. I told him I can check it for leaks, but air won't do it. It's just a waste of time. Now, if he wants to corner the market in aerial advertising, he's going to have to fork out for a bit of helium. That's what he's doing, is it? Cornering the market? Yeah, supposedly. <coughs> I said I'm going, all right. Not exactly majestic, is it? Not exactly. Looks like a dinner lady and a bit of string. 70 quid. The immoral charging for gas. God put gas on this earth for all of us. Yeah. Well, God didn't put it in canisters to drive around in a transit, did he? Well, I thought photographers had it good. Joe? Just down here, by the pool. He's not in a very good mood. I just came to tell you. You see, Warren, the psychology of disruption. One placid swimming pool and one tiny olive. Ripples create ripples. Thus, one tiny olive disrupts the status quo. I just thought you should... Someone has flipped an olive into our pool, Warren. Someone has trodden on the forbidden lawns. Hey. Joey Bullen, I hear, is having his poster advertising material circulated as of this afternoon by a... a Mr. Arthur Daly. It appears that... Daly? Don't interrupt, please, Warren. Sorry. Mr. Pike. Sorry, Mr. Pike. It appears that we have been undercut. We have with the balloons as well. That's what I came for. You know you're moving into inflatables. I just found out there's an Arthur Daly moving into balloons as well, kind of Wilston Manor. And he's after cornering the market. I think we should treat Mr. Daly to a night out on the marsh. Don't you, Warren? Right, my dear. Now, this is what I envisage. Me standing here with a, a sort of professional smile and, and a cabin in the background and the inflatable above my head. You think you can manage that? I think it may be my powers, Arthur. Marvellous, marvellous. Right. All set? Twitching to go. Right. Yeah, hold on, don't, don't click, don't click. What's all this? Well, you want me to be in it, don't you? Ray, this is a major company business launch. Well, I'm part of the company. I'm an executive. You've always said... Are you ready? No, 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 no. no. Hold on, hold on. How can, how can I put this, Ray? Look, um, our business here is like a little version of our great nation. Every man has a function. Everyone turns his own little cog in the machine. Right. Right. Now, whatever his rank, however humble his calling, every man's job is critical to the running of that great machine. All right? All right. All right. But at the end of the day, you can only have one person's head on the stamps. Right? Are you going to do anything? Like what? It looks a bit dull. Well, those uh, Brazilian dancers I ordered should be here in a minute. What do you mean, dull? Dull? Can't you point? Point at what? Your nose. The balloon. Why, well, isn't it clear where it is? Oh. Have you, have you got it in that little square? You have to have it all, all in that little square. Oh, do you, Arthur? Don't let's hear it all is, yeah. In, in, in focus, not all fuzzy. No, it's not fuzzy, Arthur. Well, why do I have to point? I want a promotional photo, not a spot the blimp card. I'll show you. That is it. I'm gonna have to kill him. Look, I know you're used to doing catwalks, but we don't want none of that fuzzy stuff, OK? It's all right, Arthur. I left my fuzzy camera at home today. Good. Now, all nice and sharp, me, the cabin and the inflatable. But... Arthur, it looks like a holiday snap. You're going to have to interact with it. Hold your arms out. Say, hi, hello, this is what I've got to offer you. I am a respected member of this community. I do not want photos of me looking like Ethel Berman on a supermarket notice board. Right, well, we'll have to compromise then. 
Lead with your hand. Hold it up like that and smile. Yeah, that's it. That's lovely. You have to get it all in the little square, make sure it's not fuzzy. Oh! Yeah, thanks, Gloria. You were brilliant with it. Well, you owe me one good night out. And it has to be Spanish or upwards. It isn't a tandoori job. I promise you, Spanish, French, Italian, whatever you want, you deserve it. Well, what about La Cuisine at 8 o'clock? Yeah, all right. Just got to drop these miles off Denise, then. Well, don't be late. Don't be there. One minute late and that film goes in the Beaujolais. 8 o'clock. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Oh, hello. Is that a fire brigade? Yeah, well, not only are they customised for the fire brigade, but they are of particular interest to firemen because they are, of course, lucky charms. What was that? Uh, uh, well, Cornish mythology states that anyone possessing a pixie or similar thing, will never be befelled by any bad luck. Yeah, yeah, all right, you have a word and uh, I'll call in the morning. Good luck. Hello? 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 You come to see about R in the balloon? Ah! No. No. You're late, Mr. Daly. Yeah, I'm sorry, I had bad traffic. Over there, please. Quick as you can. All right, all right, I'm not skivvy, you know. Pardon? Uh, nothing. Can you not roll them on the concrete? It blunts the blades. I've had it, Arthur. How come it's all right for me to be a skivvy in one way, but I can't be a business associate in the other, eh? No, you can't answer that, can you? Right. Right, Arthur. I, I think it's about time we had a little chat about job description. Arthur? Arthur! Absolutely sure. Oh, it's taken a few years' practice, Ray, but I can normally spot him from behind a bar. I know that, Dave. It's just that usually when he disappears, he comes down here. Yeah. Then there's his cigar. That's the odd thing. Yeah. Now, Arthur would never leave half a cigar. But, but, but perhaps he was in a bit of a rush. But where? Well, it's a slim chance, but he, he might just have gone home. Oh, come off it, Dave. Stranger things have happened. Ah, mademoiselle, bonsoir. Par ici. Thank you. A drink, perhaps? Uh, yes, please, dry martini. You're waiting for someone? Uh, yes, I am. Auntie? Yeah, it's, uh, it's right. Yeah, me, I'm all right. I I'm fine. I'm uh, just uh, wondering, you haven't seen Arthur in the last hour or two, have you? Of course, I must be crazy. I'll try him down in Winchester. It's a funny feeling being stood up, isn't it? You get this funny, empty feeling in your stomach. And suddenly everyone else is in couples and happy and kissing, and you're the only one who isn't. <laughs> Not so bad when it's two of us, is it? This is how they meet in films. No, Letty, I'm... Look, stop laughing. Letty, this is serious. Arthur has disappeared. Look, I haven't trodden on any forbidden laws. And if I did, there wasn't any 
any signs up. So do you think you could see your way to taking me back? Hello? No, right, you can't go to the law. Not yet. Besides, if you ring them and tell them that Arthur Daly has been abducted, it's going to be two days before they stop cheering. He hasn't been gone all that long. It's only just half past eight. Half eight? Gloria. Thanks. Can I get you some wine? Uh, yeah, I'll have a Beaujolais. A bottle? No, a glass with about that much in it, please. Just enough to drop a roll of film in. Look, I hadn't realised the government had privatised the park keeper service. When I was a lad, they used to wallop you around the ear and tell your parents. I didn't realise it's become an imprisonable offence. You have trodden on the forbidden lawns. Hey, Gloria, I'm sorry I'm a bit late. Oh, Ray, it's lovely to see you. Can I just warn you in advance of your excuse that there is one word which you might use which will sink this film, OK? To go on. Gloria, I'm sorry I'm late. I've had a bit of trouble with Arthur. Oh! That was the word. Gloria. Have a nice meal. Eh? Gloria, sit down. It's important. I think Arthur's been abducted. Ray, of all the excuses available to it's you... It's not an excuse. I'm not going to make up an excuse like that, am I? Abducted? Yeah. One thing I meant to stop happening, and I... Well, I failed, haven't I? What has he got into this time? He's got out of his depth, hasn't he? He's not started anything new, has he? No. This balloons thing. I hardly think balloons are a big mafia issue, do you? So there's no new faces about the place that he might have had dealings with? Uh, Gloria, I've told you this. What? The bloke from the garage. What garage? Come on. No, I'm going to ask a question. And I'll be very grateful if the answer didn't contain the words lawns or forbidden. Right? Where are we going? You have trodden. Thank you very much. Is the attendant a man or a woman? It's a bloke. Right. Well, I'll go then. You? Why? Well, because if I go, I stand more chance of getting what I want. And tragically, that's the way the world works. Don't ask me why. Excuse me. What pump is it? Uh, no, it's no pump. I was wondering if you could help me. I'm in a bit of trouble. What's the problem? Well, I was just driving past here yesterday, and this man in a van pulled out right into my path. And, uh, well, I've just been to the hospital, and it's whiplash, it's nothing. But the man said that he'd leave his name and address with my car for the insurance, and when I got the name, it just doesn't exist. A and the car's a total write-off. Oh, it's just a chance, but... You don't know who he might have been. Pike? Yeah. Tony Pike business account. That's what was on the cheque. Tony Pike? You know it. No. Damn. Uh, hang about it. I mean, not personally, but I have heard the name. Somebody I know has talked about him. Well, come on, Dave. Anything. I mean, what he does, where he goes, anything. Someone I know worked with him. I, I can picture him telling me. Yeah? I can't remember. This isn't going to work. We'll have to think of something else to do. Hang about, hang about. I've got it. It's Bullen. Who? Joey Bullen. The, the boxing bloke. have trodden on the forbidden lawns, Mr. Daly. That means tomorrow morning, they'll be taking you out of your own crutches. Get out! <laughs> Sir, 
side. Flying Dutchman, you're only three minutes. Excuse me, mate. What? Who are you? I'm looking for Joey Bullen. Who let you back here? This is authorised only. No, I've got to see him. It's really important, mate. Well, he's not here. The flight started. He's in the auditorium. Out. Well, all right. Can you tell us what he looks like, then? Out. Good going, mate. Look, excuse me. Shut up. Just a minute. I said, shut up. Look, look, could I just ask one one question that could be crucial to all this? One, one question, then shut it. Who is Tony Pike? They all say that. I bet. Not that I've done this before. I just bet they all say that, though. Ladies and gentlemen! Who looks like they run the place? The third part this evening! From Finsbury Park, weighing 180 pounds, will you welcome Mike Middleman Marshall? Well, Mike. Look, look. Right, stay here. What are you going to say? I think of Sammy. <laughs> Excuse me, Joey Bullen. I want a word, please, Mr. Bullen. Shut up. There's a bloody fight going on. I hadn't you noticed. Uh, listen, I just want to... And from Eindhoven, in the lowlands, weighing 190 pounds, will you please welcome Bill Flying Dutchman Van Dyke? <laughs> he was the fool. Oh, shut up, I get out. I want to work with you now, please. Get out. I want to talk about Arthur Daly. About Arthur Daly. You know Arthur Daly? Of course I do. He's me uncle. Sit down. Sit. in here yesterday. All right. We go back, him and me. Mr. Bullen, Arthur has disappeared. What? That's why we're here. He's gone. We think it might have something to do with a guy called Tony Pike. Pike? You're kidding. You know him. Oh, yeah. I know Tony Pike. Just a bit of business. Don't wait up. Could be a little while. Just get me a chair, Snowy. I know I can do it. So he's got a fly posting racket. No, not ah. Uh, the fly posting racket. And if anyone else gives it a go. Well, what? Well, he has this thing, a night out on the marshes. Anyone who crosses him gets it. Well, gets what? What is it? I don't know. All I know is the blokes who come back. Look, I don't like in front of the lady. Look, tell us, where is it? The one time he needed me as a minder, the one time. You've got to get to him, Ray. Where are these marshes? We don't know. You'd have to ask somebody who's been. Well, who, who's been? Les, out there. Les Critchley. Les, come in here a minute. Right, Les. I've got a job for you. Oh, yeah? Lost something? No flaming fags. You, uh, you smoke cigars? Why? Well, just have a glass of cigar you can have. Don't. Don't think just because this is the first time I fall for anything. That's all right, look. There you are. Favour for a favour. Don't think this buys you anything. So tell you this, this don't change a thing. Tomorrow morning, they'll still be taking you out on crutches, right? Mate, a mine is in trouble. And we all help our mates, don't we, Les? Look after you, yeah. Come on. All right. Let's get you in here. Morella Court, please, mate. Okay, Governor. 
way. Look, Ray, will you just please be careful? It's under control. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. All right, call me. All right. Go on. Make it snappy, Cabby. to rendezvous on the marshes. Right, east, innit? We start heading east to start with. Yeah, east is fine. Fine. Yeah. Oh, Look, you're OK. You're going to be no danger with me. Yeah, and you think that counts, do you? Against points, boys. These were the band. A bit bendy. It's all right. All for me? Aren't you hungry? Nah. You have it all. Oh, well, we'll uh, have a chat over supper. <laughs> have a bit of time to spend. And you know what they say. Fiat opportunis. Huh? Yeah. Warren, why am I here? Because... Because you have trodden on the forbidden lawns. Right, now, these lawns I keep hearing about belong to this Tony Pike, who I also keep hearing about, and it... Hold on. I've got it. It's the lawnmowers, isn't it? Hey? From Eric's. He's in the lawnmowers. <laughs> no, no. Advertising. What? Posters. Well, not just posters anymore. Advertising blimps. This is new thing. The bus station. Finsbury Park, that's where they got me. I can't go past it now, serious. I have to go up Tollington Park Road, turn left into Mayfield. Oh, who got you? Pike! Well, his boys. Always had these head cases around him. Inhospitable, this place, isn't it? That's why Tony likes it. How does this uh, Mr. Piper of yours take apologies, Warren? Doesn't work. Didn't for me. No. So, do you come from a long line of minders, Warren? I mean, is it a family profession? No, no. Dad was a fish porter. Oh. Billingsgate. So this Mr. Pike must have made you a very good offer. It's going to be beaten up. Ah, oh. so you decided discretion was the better part of Allah? Yeah. Yeah, that's really true. Mm. Yeah, you know a lot of, you know, sayings, don't you? I rely on them, Warren. The words of the wise are but torches to guide us through the tunnel of life. I like that. Sayings, mm. like treading on the forbidden lawns. The taking out on crutches was mine. Oh, I did that. Very effective. And what was that of yours, that, um, Fiat Opportuni? Fiat Opportunis. You speak Latin as well. Like a native. Fiat, let there be, Opportunis, Opportunity. Oh, see, I like that. I love all that. He thinks I'm thick. Who does? Shut up, Warren. Mr Pike, please. Bloody skivvy this, skivvy that. We we'll use some physical aggression, Warren. Hate all that. Hate it. He likes to think he's some long good Friday gangster. He's got all this technique. Starts with his minders. They lock you in this this place and just stare at you. He won't turn up for ages, but he tells him just to stare and say nothing. My dad, you see, hated violence. Couldn't stand it. I think he was working a lot with fish that did it. Because they're very calm, aren't they, fish? Yeah, yeah. They're not naturally aggressive. No, 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 no. Very calm. Precisely. Then he turns up. OK. Pike does. And he has his cigar waiting. 
and he just smokes it without saying anything, just looking at you. He loves air. Then he's nearly finished, and he stubs it. Oh, that's just the aperitif. He has this block of wood, and an, 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 an iron bar, and look, where was all this? A sort of signs for Dartford. Tell me more about your dad, Warren. Oh, well, only if you want to, obviously. You like words, Dad. Used to get a reader's digest. Had yeah, this page with nice little sayings people had said. Used to learn them. Used to say them, like you. He knew hundreds. Like, why don't we grow older, if not to grow wiser? Or a, a twinge of conscience, Warren. It's a glimpse of God. God? That's God. Oh, God, God, right, yeah. I think you would have liked me to be a writer. Something with words. Well, possibly something to do with fish. That'd have made him really proud. Well, you do work for a Mr. Pike. I suppose I must have let him down a bit, really. Can't really be proud of being on the dole for 20 years, and then running a poster outfit. Well, we all have to find our... You ran a poster gang? On my own. That's how I ended up here. I was up pasting on Muswell Hill one night. Tony Pike draws up. Gets out, shouting and screaming. Now he's going to put me in the back of the van. But, like, he's two feet smaller. He just stops and looks up and says, all right, he give me the option. I'm going to get beaten up or have a job. Driving around, chasing those who was... Treading on his forbidden lawns. But, Warren, did it never cross your mind to beat him up at all? I can't really handle the physical aggression. Oh, dear, Warren. Yeah. You ain't trying anything psycho. You know, soften me up, because it won't work. Warren, I wouldn't dream of it. Honestly. Left. Right. No, left. You were. Uh... Look, make up your mind. I don't know, do I? You don't know what this is like, mate. This is like escaping from the gates of hell and someone driving you back again in a taxi. You talk a lot about your dad, Warren, don't you? Did he, did he pass on any pearls of wisdom? Pearls of wisdom? That's nice. Yeah, you know, little lessons to help you through life. Yeah. Yeah. He used to put me on his knee and say, Warren, never, ever eat the head of a turbot. You're right. No, I, I, I meant more emotional rather than uh, fish-oriented. The brown stuff is dangerous. And the eyes are really bitter. Yeah, my dad passed on a pearl of wisdom to me. Hmm? Yeah. Arthur, he said, fear is a weapon. The knife itself is not frightening, but fear of the knife is what's frightening. And the more you think about that, the truer it becomes. Yeah. Yeah. But some knives are frightening. Yeah, Warren. Some knives are massive. Yeah. Dad had these huge ones he used to fill it conger eels with. Yeah, what I'm trying to say, Warren, is all of this has happened to me before. Been kidnapped? Yeah. It was very traumatic. I was seven. And, and there was this other kid, well, you know how you get one who's a bully boy. Yeah. And, and he, he locked me in this sports shed, tied me up and stuck a bean bag in my mouth so I couldn't call for help. And I, I could hear all the others playing outside, playing British Bulldog on the field. Right. When I told my dad, Arthur, he said, if you don't stand up to this lad, you will have a beanbag in your mouth for the rest of your life. Your fear of him is his only weapon. Do you see what I'm trying to say, Warren? Yeah. That is all Tony Pike has got. Definitely. Definitely. 
stop! <laughs> what? Left. I think it was left. You said definitely. I was upside down in the back of the van, wasn't I? Yeah, but didn't you look on the way back? Funnily enough, no. Funnily enough, I was deciding whether to pass out from the ankles or a cigar. Look, me... don't tell me that. I don't want to hear it. You see, Warren, I know minders. There's good and there's bad. And a good minder's better than skivvying around. I mean, you, you are a sensitive person, Warren. That makes you bigger than all this. You're bigger than skivvying. You're bigger than Tony Pike. Let's face it, two feet bigger. So why are you here? Because you are frightened of him. We all are. But remember what happened when he got out of the van at Muswell Hill. He stopped dead. And why? Because he is frightened of you. <laughs> Somewhere here. I can feel it. It better be. You got the chance to spit that beanbag out and keep the door open. That is the great choice in your life now, Warren. Stay in the shed or run about in the sun. Walk out of this place into that bright new dawn with your head held high and say, I am Warren. I am not a skivvy. I am a dignified human being. Oh, think what your dad would say. There. Up there. You sure? A night on the marsh. Up there. Well, come on in. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. Les. I can't. I see it. Les! Come on! <laughs> All right. Mr. Daly. Well, you want to tie this one up, Warren? He's a strong lad. So this is the Mr. Daly. This is the olive in our pool. Hmm? This is the man with the balloons. Who's been treading on the forbidden lawns of Tony Pike? Tony Pike. Heard of me, have you? Yeah, I've heard of you. Come on in. Warren, get in here, Warren. Can you help him, Warren? Warren? Arthur Daly's minder. Unless you tell me what you've done with my uncle, I'm gonna make you wish you'd never come out here tonight. I haven't done anything. So where is he then? I don't know. Right. No, I don't know. I don't know, do I? Warren the minder's taken him off. He's done it himself. He's thick. He's soft. Right, get this. No, I was calling. You heard. I thought he was here, otherwise I wouldn't have come here, would I?
Right. Goodbye, then. Thanks, Arthur. Always happy to oblige. If you get any trouble from Tony Pike... I've got your number. And remember, my friend, Fiat Opportunis. Fiat Opportunis. Get up. Sorry, Arthur. You gave me a job to do, and I was so bothered about what kind of job it was that in the end I... just didn't do it. Don't worry, Ray. Hey? You did your best in the circumstances. We all make mistakes. Wait. Ray is the man who knows when he's made a mistake. The words of Lee chime in. Engineer. Arthur. Never let it be said that Arthur Daly fell foul of that dictum. Yeah, but Arthur, I mean, what happened out there? Mm. Quite a lot happened. Suffice it to say, I have just spent the most illuminating night on the marshes, as a result of which a 15-stone man mountain has gone off to Fiat Opportunist with the rest of his life, and I've come back to Wilsdon for a shower. Yeah, but how did you get... Raymond, do you think it falls within your role of duty to run me back to the car lot. Come on. You see, Ray, it suddenly struck me while I was sitting out there that I have made a considerable mistake. I mean, if I hadn't had you running around delivering lawn mowers and God knows what all, well, it's more than likely I'd never have been on a night out in the first place because you would have been there to protect me. You see, I know you wouldn't say anything, but there's been a degree of late to which you've had the odd few skivvying jobs, Ray. Right? No. no, 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 don't deny it. And I have come to realise in my art of arts that that is true. You are worth more than that. I know that now. So I think it's time we had a chat about job descriptions. If you say so. Oh, I do, I do. I mean, wherefore do we get older, if not to get wiser? Arthur. And I say to you, no more lawnmower skimming jobs, no more peeling off posters jobs. Yeah, Arthur. No, 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 I will not hear a word against it. Arthur. And no more manual labour balloon oiking jobs. Arthur. That is my pledge to you. Will you have a look? What? Raymond, before we have our little chat, there is just one last favour. <laughs>